Hello Hattrickers, welcome to episode 66 of Let's Play Hattrick in San Marino. This is a bit of a special episode because we are three seasons into the actual cycle now. This is a perfect time to compare with the cycle in Denmark as well because it's also roughly three seasons in. I'll be pointing out a few things when we do so later in this episode. To start out, we'll start like we always do with this week's youth pool in Inter Calvajero. So let's call out Giorgio Bolini and see what he has for us this week. 16 years old, Daniel Sonsini, and that's a straight up rejection. No brainer, really. Okay, let's see here. Gen Gennaro Gianotti, 15 years old, weak scoring, reach poor defending. No. Let's see. Primo, 15 years. Old Manfredi Briganti, remain with weak passing. Could reach poor playmaking. It's not very promising, I must say. We could perhaps try him out in a match at some time. 15 years old, 67 days. Not what you would call a diamond in the rough, surely. In the youth team as well, we do have a striker that could perhaps help us a little bit just because we really don't have any strikers. Let's go ahead and promote Roberto Trastulli. He's halfway through scoring. Perhaps we can utilize him a little. Let's just see what happens once we promote him. He actually gained half a level in scoring from this promotion. He was 5.5. All right. Interesting. Let's just check his transfer compare and set it to powerful because that might actually... No, it doesn't mean anything. Okay, well... We'll see if we can use this guy in the future. In the senior training department, we had Francioni popping to brilliant defending this week and one of the profit players, Blitvoski, popping to inadequate defending from this week's training update. So in order to compare the cycles in more detail, I did prepare two sheets to look at the financial side of things, one being the wages and one being the assets of the clubs themselves. But before we look into that, I would like to show you guys some player cards which I made in order to compare the skill side of things with the actual core players of the clubs. We start out with the youngest players, Hauke and Camellini here. If we look at their skills, they are magnificent and brilliant in defense respectively. You'll see that Camellini is ahead in the PM section because we've been swapping back and forth and Hauke is only weak there. If you combine passing and scoring for Hauke, there'll be 10 combined and that'll be eight combined for Camellini. But all the relevant skills summarized, we have Camellini ahead by two skill points compared to Hauke. Hauke is a header, so that's uh, him being ahead in that regard. Moving on to Lisao and Francioni, you'll see that just like before, we have Lisao ahead on defense and then Francioni just one behind being brilliant. He's ahead on playmaking Francioni because he is formidable while Lisao is only inadequate. If we combine passing and scoring for these two, they have 10 combined both, but we will see the player from San Marino, Francioni, being ahead on the summarized skills again. Moving on to the crown jewels of each build, Bostop and Sanotti. This is the first time you see the Danish player being ahead on the summarized skills, Bostop being supernatural in defending while Sanotti is only magnificent, Sanotti being outstanding in playmaking while Bostop is only inadequate. If we summarize passing and scoring, Bostop has 12 in those combined while Sanati only has 8 and that gives Ostop 31 combined relevant skills compared to Sanati's 30. Both having a spec is very nice. Ostop is obviously powerful while Sanati is a hit specialist. But this is the only case where you see the Danish player being slightly ahead right now. If we move on to looking at the actual numbers here, we are making a comparison on how the projected wages will be for the two cycles. Right now, we've just had the 20th birthday for both Rico Ostop and Sonati. And if we look at the difference in wages, because we've been swapping back and forth between defending and playmaking in San Marino, it's actually a weekly difference of 6,160 euros. And on a seasonal level, that makes it 98,560 just for one player. Now, looking at the projected wages for Lisao and Francioni, we could make the same calculation. And the difference is 5,450 and a seasonal difference of 87,200 euros. It actually makes up quite a bit of difference. Difference. We also have to pay attention to the fact that Francioni and Camellini don't have any specs, so that'll be another discount. But if we look at the difference between Hauke and Camellini, you'll see the difference is 4,250 euros each week, and during a full season, it'll be 68,000 euros. 
if we add up all those figures, it'll be 253,000 euros just during the fourth season of the build. What if we look at the coming season? So the difference between Ostrup and Sanati will be even greater now at 9,300, amounting to a seasonal difference of 148,000. So still an increasing difference between the two players because of the difference in main skill. If we look at Annalisa and Francioni, that's actually starting to even out. So the difference is getting smaller, 45,000 for full season. And during the second season, you see the same pattern here, Hauke and Camerlini, with less of a difference. And actually, when you go to the 22nd year of their contract, you'll actually see Camerlini earning more than Hauke because of the change in which of those guys actually have the highest main skill. Still no spec on these guys. The interesting thing to point out here is the fact that both of these clubs should perhaps have afforded a bit more money before starting out on the cycle itself. So during season four, five and six, you can actually make a difference of almost 470,000 euros just in wages. So there is some money to be saved. It's worth taking into consideration that you could swap back and forth more often in order to save money on wages. It's even a bigger benefit if you are able to perhaps keep profit trainees throughout a swap in training as well, if that makes sense, because obviously having to sell players, you will also potentially lose some money there due to transfer fees. Anyway, so this is just the wage comparison for the players. So let's check out a sheet that I've shown you guys before, the assets sheet. Normally, I would have a row for the expectations, but right now we're just trying to compare things as it is right now in each of the cycles respectively. So in San Marino on the left here, we have 17.7 .7 million funds at the moment. We are 48 weeks into the cycle. We did spend some extra money during the season on an excellent coach, but I thought it was time and it was like an idea to make this sort of a challenge coming up with the playmaking training, see if we could actually turn this around. But because right now i believe we are behind on money so um yeah a challenge to see here comparing that to the danish cycle LBOCF, we do have 31.3 million euros in not liquid cash but um liquid cash plus what's in the board reserves but they should be easy to uh, get out still the level five financial director you can get 500 000 euros out each week but make sure that you are able to get all of that out before you have to use it looking at the profit place i've been adjusting these set uh, so compares a bit to the recent development in the market and it's uh, slowing down a little and it could be due to the fact that people are actually holding on to their money before you see a lot of HTAL players released into the market at the end of the season and that will perhaps uh, drive down prices a little compared to what you usually see. If you combine all the transfer compares of uh, the profit players in San Marino we do have 33 million 450 thousand euros and that should be enough to make sure we can secure the two wingers in half a season or so. It's looking a little better in Denmark where we have accumulated assets of approximately 48 million euros. We do not take the core players into consideration but it's nice to see them listed here where you see Oakstrup at 3.3 million euros transfer compare at the moment. We need to make more money in both cycles very soon so it'll be interesting to see if we are even capable of that. It has been easier to earn money in Denmark because we have had less training swaps at this point, the potential of trying to skill trade a little in playmaking might see both of these money making plans accelerate a bit. It'll be tough to say. I do have to mention the cycle in Denmark started out with an absolute monster pool of a goalkeeper. Well, he's now playing at the under 21s in Denmark already, being just 20 years old. So that's excellent. And that also explains why we are 15 million ahead roughly in the Danish cycle. So that's all for the cycle compare here. But the conclusions are you can definitely save money on wages if you do swap between the training cycles more often but pay attention to the fact that you could be losing the money you earn from this in transfer fees if you're not careful one way to make sure that that doesn't happen is the possibility of having profit players going across training cycles so you don't have to sell every time you swap training but that requires a little engineering and some extra planning as well that's all for the comparison now let's check out how it went in the league match against berlin united
So we were facing a very tough challenge playing against the top team of the league. The ratings showed us how difficult it would be. So we could only really make one side attack here and we had to kind of gamble. And obviously that was too much of a deal breaker for us today. Berlin United coming with a very nice central attack and also a pretty good right attack. And even on the left, they had a better chance of scoring than we did. Let's just take a look at the star performances here because you do see Sanachi six stars in the middle of the park for Tatku one of the profit players doing really well and um, yeah not uh, the best of matches but we didn't have any injuries and we did actually see a quite nice crowd today 47,980 spectators for this match Looking at the league, we are 10 points behind Charles Lunge and they'll be battling as much as they can in order to try to see if they can slip by Berlin United should they slip up in one of their matches in the final run-in of the season. Five points clear of the unknowns and we play those guys in the last match of the season. Hopefully it will be settled by then, but we can't say for sure. It's looking alright in terms of finishing in third at least, so that's pretty nice. As a final thing for this episode, I will just want to show you guys Menki, who is about to be promoted as well. I was contacted by the winger scout. He asked me if I could try to see if we can bump his scoring and actually see if it's able to reach an adequate just before the promotion. He has one game left before he can be promoted. So that's all for this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Would you consider swapping back and forth for your cycle? Or would you go for the approach I have done in Denmark where you train? For instance, all the defending in one go. I'd like to know, so please let me know in the comments how you feel about that one. And thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel. Have a great weekend, Hattrick. I'll see you guys. Take care. Arrivederci.